Con celebrating with me, of course, is Deacon Sam and Father Felix, not the cat, but Felix de la Cruz, <laughs> visiting from the Philippines. So we begin our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Jesus is King of the universe. We celebrate this great feast to bring to an end the ordinary time in our liturgical season, but at the same time to bring to a close the extraordinary jubilee year of mercy. God's mercy doesn't end, but it's just a jubilee year. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The ruler, the ruler sneered at Jesus and said, he saved others, let him save himself. If he is the chosen one, the Christ of God, even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him, there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now, one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The others, however, rebuked him and said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we receive corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Jesus, remember me? Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus is King of the universe. This statement seems to be not the case when we go to the Gospel reading according to St. Luke. What are we presented in that Gospel reading? It is about the crucifixion of Jesus. And in this crucifixion of Jesus, Luke, the evangelist, presents to us that Jesus is King. There are two parts in the Gospel reading. The first part is the mockery of Jesus. As if crucifying him on the cross was not enough, they still had to mock him. At the beginning of the gospel, it says there, they sneered at him. And they shouted all the more. And written as inscription on top of the cross is Jesus, King of the Jews. Now, please make no mistake. This was written in order to mock Jesus, not to praise him, not even to tell the truth, even though that is the truth. Because Pontius Pilate said, because they said, don't, don't put that, don't put that, that he is king of the Jews. But Pontius Pilate said, what I have written, I have written. And even to add insult to the mockery, one of the criminals crucified with Jesus even shouted at him, if you are king, save yourself and us. As if for him, he remembered if Jesus was able to cure the paralyzed, he was able to bring sight to the blind, he was able to allow the dumb to speak and even to 
bring the dead back to life. Then if you are king, you can do all of this. So save yourself and us. Brothers and sisters, this is the whole situation about Jesus, king of the universe. But that's only the first part. There's a second part of the gospel, which is a miracle. The other disciple, or the other criminal, who was crucified with Jesus, look at the other criminal and says, be quiet. This man is innocent. This man has not done anything criminal. But we are sinners. We are criminals. This is an act of justice for us. And that criminal turns to Jesus and says, Lord, remember me. I want you to look at those words. He says, Lord, remember me. That's all he is asking, to be remembered. He doesn't say, take me. He says, remember me. Isn't that something that perhaps this criminal must have heard and seen in Jesus? What were the first words of Jesus from the cross? He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. So this criminal was listening and was taught by a word, forgive. And that's why he immediately says to the Lord, remember me. Just remember me. And he was rewarded for that because now he is practically saying, remember me when you come into your kingdom. This is the miracle that happens. Even though it was a mockery at the beginning of the gospel, the second part reminds us, remember me when you come into your kingdom. This criminal saw something in Jesus that he was not just a special person, that he was not only innocent, that he has not done anything criminal, but he is a king. That's why he says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And now he is rewarded when Jesus says, today, this very moment, you will be with me in paradise. Brothers and sisters, I don't know with you, but every time I come across this encounter between the criminal and Jesus, it makes me feel something special. Because Jesus says, this very moment, right now, you will be with me in paradise. A man who was only asking to be remembered not even to be taken into paradise. But Jesus rewards as he always does to everyone. This moment, you will be with me in paradise. Brothers and sisters, this is the kind of king that we have. Jesus is king of the universe. He's not a king that would erase everything, but he is a king who will not only remember us, but he is a king who will bring us into paradise. Would you like that to happen? Definitely. Even though we are only asking to be remembered. So today, my brothers and sisters, as we celebrate the solemnity of Christ the King, let us take the lead, that good criminal, let us say to the Lord, remember me. Remember my family. Remember my children who used to go to Catholic schools and now they don't even come to church anymore. 
Say those words, brothers and sisters. Remember us, Lord Jesus, because Jesus is listening. And he's saying to us, you will be with me in paradise. Not only when we will die, but right this very moment. He's listening to all of us. And even for those families, where are the families for baptism? Would you raise your hand? Baptism? Okay. So when you, when you are bringing your children for baptism, always remember that it's a very important ministry. Not only are your children being baptized, they become children of God. They are not your own property anymore. They become property of the community of believers. Isn't that something special? Because now that they will receive baptism, they will continue to receive the other sacraments. And our catechumens and candidates, in a few minutes from now, we will be sending you forth to dwell deeper into the word that you have shared with all of us. Brothers and sisters, it's very important. Don't forget those words. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember me. And don't forget, that remembrance will bring more to you because Jesus is listening. So brothers and sisters, as we bring to a close this Jubilee year of mercy, I hope that each and every one of us had the opportunity to become ministers or agents of God's mercy. That each one of us become agents by virtue of practicing the spiritual works of mercy and the corporal works of mercy that Pope Francis has challenged all of us. It's been a year, brothers and sisters. I, I hope that it's not the first time you hear about the Jubilee year because it's coming to a close today. So let us ask the Lord for his great love and mercy by saying, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Amen. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with Him eternally in His heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to thank Father Felix de la Cruz for concelebrating with us this morning. And I'd like you to pray for him because uh, he is now applying into the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. And hopefully that uh, the Lord may guide and strengthen him. Whether he comes to St. John Baptist de La Salle is a big question. But we pray for him. And of course, we thank Deacon Sam. Let's all stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.